At this point, it feels like my entire life these last few weeks has been consumed by benchmarking. It's not quite over yet, but we've arrived at launch day for maybe the most anticipated product of the year. It seems like ever since Vega was met with, well, let's just, I guess, call it lukewarm reception. People have been clamoring for what's next, and that's Navi, AMD's next generation Radeon graphics cards, and they're here. They're, they're like right here, they're, these are them. To make sure you don't miss out on any of the crazy amount of content coming out of this AMD launch, get subscribed and hit that little notification bell down there. So let's talk a little bit about these cards. What makes them tick, the underlying architecture, and Navi in general. If you're an impatient type and you'd rather just skip right to the benchmarks, you can head to this timestamp right here, but you miss all the B-roll along the way, so that's your risk to take. We've got two new graphics cards here, the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT. While AMD has been leaning on their GCN architecture for years now, carrying it over from the RX 480 to the 580 to Vega 56 and 64, and then on to RX 590 and Radeon 7, Nvidia has been introducing new graphics card architectures with each generation and honestly pushing further ahead. But with Navi, AMD is bringing their new RDNA architecture to the table and completely redesigning their compute units with the dies manufactured on the seven nanometer process node. There has been a lot of talk about seven nanometers of late and the reason that shrinking the manufacturing process is a big deal is mainly because of two things, power and efficiency. A die shrink means that the distance between transistors on the silicon is smaller, meaning that less power is needed to communicate between them. This also means that the package is smaller, so coolers can be made more efficient, and because not as much power is needed, thermals are improved. By contrast, Nvidia is still on the 12 nanometer node, and their new full-fat Turing 102 GPUs are, by comparison, enormous at 754 square millimeters versus Navi at 251 square millimeters. Less area to cool means better temps all around. Navi is coming in two flavors initially, with the distinct possibility that we may see more powerful versions of this GPU in the future. The RX 5700 and 5700 XT are close in specs, but the 5700 XT has advantages in CUs, stream processors, compute power, and clock speeds. As a result, it draws significantly more power at load, sucking up 192 watts versus only 143 for the 5700. It was actually the clock speed part of those AMD slides that interested me the most, as traditionally AMD cards have performed poorly compared to their rated clock speeds, quickly boosting up to a high level, but then falling off just as fast often settling at a speed far below what was claimed. We saw this as recently as Radeon 7, but I'm glad to see that AMD has revised the way they are rating these cards with now a base clock, a max boost clock, and now what they call a game clock, which essentially translates into, this is what you'll see if you're running a test that lasts more than 30 seconds. In fact, I was pleasantly surprised to see that both the 5700 and the 5700 XT surpassed their rated game clocks and leveled out at respectable speeds, maintaining almost a flat line without any crazy peaks or valleys. The 5700 XT was averaging about 1880 megahertz after a full half hour soak, while the 5700 was sitting around 1690. As these are both blower cards, I didn't have high hopes for thermals or noise, and in fact, that was mostly accurate. While neither card suffered any throttling, the 5700 XT sat at an uncomfortable 83C at load and blasted out over 50 decibels of noise as the fan cranked up to try to keep pace. While the 5700 was better on both fronts, considering that it was running significantly slower clocks, it didn't really impress me either. Noise on the 5700 was definitely acceptable, but again, temps were kind of creeping up there. One of the best things that I can say about this, though, is that I fully expect board partner variants 
will fix both of these issues. And unlike Radeon 7, we can already be reasonably sure that we'll see custom coolers and custom PCBs for both of them coming from Sapphire, Asus, MSI, and others. Now, don't take that as gospel, but that's just kind of a gut feeling. One other thing that I hope that they fix about the 5700 is that this card has no backplate. Why? I'm not sure. It is a $350 product. It probably should have something back there instead of just a bare PCB. A minor nitpick, I suppose, but I know it will definitely annoy some people. Now, this launch has seen some interesting recent developments. And while this may end up being all positive for the consumer, as a reviewer, it's been driving me and others that I've talked to absolutely batty. We first got these in office about two weeks ago, and in order to give myself the maximum amount of time to get multiple validation runs in place, as well as to sort out any potential problems or discrepancies that I was seeing, I got to work testing them right away. I was constructing the angle that I might take in the review process based on the performance results, pricing, and NVIDIA's direct competing products. But then on Tuesday, a huge wrench was thrown into my plans when the 2060 Super and 2070 Super arrived in office. This threw my testing and comparisons completely out of whack, and I had to rewrite this script to account for what looked like a panic maneuver from Team Green. So I did that, and then I shot my review. And then yesterday, we got an email from AMD confirming that the launch prices for the 5700 and 5700 XT were being slashed in the interest of competition. So the RX 5700 goes from 379 to 349, while the beefier 5700 XT heads down from 449 to 399. And all the while, my head is spinning because now I have to reframe my conclusions and redo basically this entire video. We also got a follow-up email from AMD last night with new drivers, but you know what? No, there's no way I would have been able to rerun all of these tests in time, and this was the third driver that they had dropped on us. By this point, I am kind of ripping my hair out, so if they've somehow pulled any more shenanigans between the time that this is filmed, Saturday, and the time I release it, Sunday or Monday, well, I don't know. Let's just hope that doesn't happen. But this price drop is a direct response to the performance of those super cards. NVIDIA really came out swinging here, and in the subsequent charts, you'll see that in general, the 2060 Super and the 2070 Super are the superior performers. To combat this, AMD made it so that their pricing undercut NVIDIA by quite a bit at both tiers. And especially with the 5700 XT coming in a full $100 cheaper than the 2070 Super, consumers may see a small performance de deficit and a large price advantage and, well, this might turn into a fairly easy choice. I'm going to run through some slides in a minute here, but I just wanted to highlight two of them in particular before I leave you to your own devices. Here's the chart for Unigen Heaven, which runs on DirectX 11. Note how all four of our AMD GPUs have taken up residence at the very bottom, with even the RTX 2060 Super being faster overall than the Radeon 7 and both Navi variants. But then let's flip over to Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which runs on DX12. Two AMD products beat out even the RTX 2080 here, indicating what kind of crazy swings that we can expect in these performance comparisons depending on which API the game or test runs on. So the tests that you're going to see here will all run with a 9900K at 5 gigahertz, and make sure to watch all the way through as the last few slides contain a bunch of 1% and 0.1% load data. Let's roll.
Are the Navi-based RX 5700 and RX 5700 XT the best performing graphics cards? No, but they were not meant to be. It seems like AMD is content to play spoiler in the mid-market for now, as they have lined up the 2060 and 2070 as direct competitors to their new GPU lineup, and while Nvidia Super kind of threw a monkey wrench into direct comparisons, AMD still maintains a stranglehold on price to performance. Although it caused me and others huge numbers of headaches, AMD's price drop makes a ton of sense if it's financially feasible for them. While Nvidia can still claim to be the fastest, AMD can retort that they're close enough where it won't matter most of the time and also they cost less at every performance tier. This kind of falls in line with what they've been doing as a company, especially on the CPU side of things, where sure, the 9900K is the fastest single core performer and games the best, but guess what? You pay way more for that product than you do for a similar eight core from AMD. Unfortunately, with this release, AMD has kind of cannibalized its own Radeon 7, as that GPU no longer makes sense as a purchase option unless you're using every single bit of that huge 16 gigabyte frame buffer. Performance of the 5700 XT is basically equivalent while drawing less power, running quieter and costing less. So rip Radeon 7, I guess we hardly knew ye. I hope these Navi graphics cards sell well and AMD continues to iterate on this design because if that pushes the market forward, I am definitely all for it. Thanks for watching my AMD Navi review guys. Make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss out on any upcoming content on the massive AMD launch. We'll be doing a full overclocking review of these cards and of the Ryzen 3000 CPU soon on the channel, as well as builds and other cool stuff. As always, I will see you next time.